Good afternoon. I was wondering if you would start by doing a little experiment with me. Are you game? Yeah. Okay. Close your eyes and pretend like you are hosting the best party ever. Your jam is on, you've got your drink in your hand, all your friends are coming over. You open up the door. Now picture what everyone looks like as they're coming through that door. Are they tall or short? Do they have blonde hair or brown hair? Okay, you got that mental image? Open your eyes and tell me if you happen to be a guy oops, that looks like this, did everyone at your party look a little bit like this? And if you happen to be a guy that looked like this, did everybody at your party look like this? I want to talk to you today about diversity and inclusion. And don't get me wrong, please, this is not a black and white issue, literally or figuratively. But have you noticed that lately America seems a bit broken? We've got Freddie Gray in Baltimore and Eric Garner and his famous last words, I can't breathe. And it's not just about race, right? There's Tyler Clementi, the 18-year-old who jumped to his own death after being bullied for being gay. Or one in two Muslim Americans who report having been racially or religiously persecuted in the last year. I don't like the direction America is going. Do you? And I have to be honest that I probably can't change America. But I might be able to change Northeast Indiana with your help. So let's talk about Northeast Indiana. What are we really good at? What do we pride ourselves on? Fort Wayne is a great place to raise a family, right? Well, have you noticed recently that families are starting to look a little bit different? And many have for a long time. And I have to tell you, we have to have this conversation about diversity and inclusion because the same communities that are proving themselves to be open and inclusive are the same ones that are taking home the prize for being the best place to raise a family. So let's back up for a second and let's talk about what I mean by inclusivity. I see diversity as a fact, and inclusivity as an action. So are we actively inviting people into our world at the table with us, or are we just tolerating people who are different than us? People who think differently, look differently. You know, I tend to think of myself as an open, inclusive person. I have friends of different colors, persuasions, creeds, but I was shocked to see how many people at my own mental party looked and acted just like me. So that means that while I might not be actively discriminating against anyone, I could probably be more actively intentional about being more inclusive. Because if I want to change Northeast Indiana, I have to start with me. So the concept I want to present to you today is the concept of inclusivity as a spectrum. It's not just as simple as, yes, I'm inclusive, or no, I'm not. Everyone in the world exists somewhere between being completely bigoted and being completely open and inclusive to all, and only you know where you stand on that spectrum. And the challenge I have for you is what would happen if you took just one step outside of your comfort zone, just one step towards being a little bit more open and inclusive, what would Northeast Indiana look like if each of us took one step towards being more inclusive? Because here's what I know, Northeast Indiana, the 10 counties of that we are, is getting more diverse by the day. In the last 10 years, our Hispanic population has grown by 43 percent. Our Asian population has grown by 66 percent. 
And if the recent debacle over the Religious Freedom Restoration Act has taught us anything, I said it's not just about race. It's about being open and inclusive to all. But how? Well, that's when I turn to one of my favorite philosophers of all time. Naturally, I'm talking about Dr. Seuss. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. The answer to how is you. You are the only ones who can make change in Northeast Indiana. You. So let's talk about you, Northeast Indiana. Where does Northeast Indiana stand on this inclusivity spectrum? Well, I recently completed a large-scale market research project called the Our Story Project. It was spearheaded by the Northeast Indiana Regional Partnership, and we went to 10 counties, we held 23 workshops, we talked to almost 900 people. And the purpose of the project was to unite Northeast Indiana around a common story that we could use to market Northeast Indiana to the world. But there was one piece of the story that didn't quite fit. One of the exercises uh, in the workshops was called Traits. We talked about Northeast Indiana as if it was a human being, and we talked about dozens of different personality traits and words that describe us. And then the exercise got interesting. Everyone was given just one little blue star sticker that they could put on any one word that they wanted to challenge, any word that they thought, this does not authentically describe Northeast Indiana as we are today. And over and over again, I watched as a sea of blue appeared next to one word, inclusive. Inclusive was the one word that people said, this is not authentically Northeast Indiana right now. Now, that doesn't mean that they didn't want us to be more inclusive, they do. We talked about race, we talked about LGBT rights, we talked about transplants, people that just weren't born here that can't answer the age-old question of what high school did you go to. Right? These people don't feel like they belong in our community. And one gentleman, one gentleman put his little blue star sticker on the word traditional. He said, I'm worried this word means you won't accept me. I'm gay, I have a partner, and I wasn't even sure if I could say that out loud in this room. Does that matter, Northeast Indiana? I mean, really, am I just telling you a sad story, or does that really affect our community? Because I would argue that if you answer yes to either of the following two questions, then yes, we have to have this conversation about diversity and inclusion. And the two questions are this. Do we need to attract top talent to our region? I work in economic development by day, and I can tell you that the top issue facing our state today is population stagnation. We are not attracting the talent we need to sustain and grow our businesses. And what about the economy? Do you want to live in a thriving economy with all the amenities and cultural attractions that you want? Yes? Then we have to have this conversation. So let's dig in a little bit deeper on the talent issue. Let's say we want to attract college graduates. Well, research shows that college graduates are moving in large numbers to places that have a high number of artists and cultural creatives, a high amount of diversity and tolerance, and the highest correlation of all, a large gay and lesbian population. So, does diversity and inclusion affect our talent attraction efforts? Yes. And what about the economy? $1.8 trillion. $1.8 trillion! That is the amount of the collective buying power of ethnic minorities in the United States. That's not a number I want to sneeze at. And what about per capita income? Research shows there that countries that have a higher number of rights for the LGBT community also have a higher per capita income. This is the economic bottom line. 
We are in a global war for talent and jobs, and if we want to be a world-class community, we have to have this conversation. And furthermore, the U.S. Census tells us that by the year 2050, 55 percent of the U.S. population will be ethnic minorities, which means whites are the new minority. So diversity has been achieved. Now the question is inclusion. Diversity is saying, hey, your skin color is different than mine. Inclusion is saying, hey, you want to go grab a cup of coffee? Now listen, I know that it is scary to start this conversation. It is. But I have great news. Great news. Northeast Indiana, you're ready. You're ready to have this conversation. And you want to know how I know? Let's take a step back and go back to that Our Story Project again. Another exercise, we talked about where we as a region stand on a scale of 0 to 10 between two polar opposite concepts. And one of those concepts was conservative to progressive. Now, before anybody freaks out, it's about risk-taking, not about politics, okay? We talked about where we stand right now, and we talk about where we want it to be. We talked to almost 900 people, and the results show that we want to more than double our risk-taking ability. And furthermore, we talked about what our persona is as a region, and again, the research showed us that we're a contender. We have this gritty, determined personality that doesn't give up when the going gets rough. Now, are you going to ask me if either of those questions was specifically about diversity and inclusion? I will tell you no, they were about the region as a whole. But what an issue that has this much effect on our community and our economy, wouldn't this be the best place for us to choose to be bigger, bolder, more assertive, to not give up when the conversation gets tough? And I think, heck yes, let's do this. And then I think, holy cow, where do we start? I mean, honestly, sometimes I look in the mirror and I think, I'm a 37-year-old white girl in the middle of Indiana. What can I do to have an effect on this huge conversation? And then I remember Malala. Do you know who Malala is? When Malala was 14, she was shot in the head by the Taliban because they didn't think that girls should be getting an education and she happened to be walking to school. Not only did Malala survive, she's a contender too. She became an activist, a Nobel Peace Prize winner. She's 17, and the words of wisdom that she has to impart to us are when the whole world is silent. Even one voice becomes powerful. Because the truth is, someone else can't make change. They can't. You are the only one who can make this change. You. And I have to be honest that when I finished the Our Story Project, I really had to take a step back and think about all the stories people had told me because I was overwhelmed. I felt this enormous responsibility to do something, to say something, but I didn't know what, I didn't know where to start. So I just started by talking to people, by getting connected. I literally started by just having coffee at Starbucks. And I was worried that people wouldn't want to meet with me or that they'd be suspicious of why I wanted to meet with them. But I was greeted with open arms and often hugs. It was an awesome privilege to sit across from someone and let them know that their work is seen and that they are a valuable asset in our community. And I wanted to give that to them because I was getting so much in return. I was learning from these different cultural perspectives and I was growing as a person. And when we as a community do that, we grow as a community. And I wanted to go see what other communities were doing also. So I went to Indianapolis and they had an event there called Awkward conversations. <laughs> yeah, they just owned it. They had people of different sexual persuasions, race, um, the disabled, anyone who knew what it felt like to be different in the community. Could you start something like that? Could you? So, awkward conversations. That brings me to the other half of the equation. 
It is vital that we become more inclusive as a community, but it's also so important that the groups that we're trying to include are understanding of our possibly bumbling attempts to include them, right? Because it's going to be awkward and we're not perfect, but we're going to try, right? I mean, can you just turn to each other right now and just like pinky swear that we're going to be patient as we get through this because it's the only way we're going to make progress. We all have different obstacles to overcome, right? And it's just about knowing how to talk about it. I mean, when I start to think about talking to someone of a different race about race, I start to sweat a little bit, right? I get nervous and I'm like giving myself a migraine, being like, should I use the term African-American or black? And in my head, I'm just saying, please, God, don't say something accidentally offensive. Please, God, don't say something accidentally offensive. But the truth is, I might offend you. You might offend me, but that's okay. We're all at different points on our journey, and the key is to try. But the journey, it's not going to be easy, and the road is not straight. And no one, I mean no one, has a road map. But that's okay. Be kind. Be patient. But be daring enough to break the silence, crack the world open and let the light in, that's where the love is. Openness is just the beginning. And that's where we are, at the beginning. And that's okay. At the end of the day, I'm just asking you, if you'll think about this inclusivity spectrum and think about what it would mean with your one step. One step, that's all I'm asking. Increase your risk-taking one step towards being more inclusive. Finally, go introduce yourself to your Burmese neighbor or ask your gay coworker to go out for drinks after work and find out what you have in common. Or invite the person that just moved here to go out with your friends and feel like they know what it's about to be a part of our community. And at the end of the day, when you walk out that door, will you think about this inclusivity spectrum? Will you think about what your one step means for an entire community? It's your step that matters. It's your voice that matters. Just remember what Malala said. When the whole world is silent, even one voice becomes powerful. Please be that voice for Northeast Indiana. Thank you.